Hi guys, so today I have a review for you and a giveaway. So um, thank you so much Local King Rubber Stamp for sending this item for a giveaway. What's interesting is that I had the same uh, stamp set already. So what I thought is I'll review it because you guys can check it out. If you uh, like it, you can hop over there and get that uh, going. I know Lisa right now on Local King Rubber Stamp site has 20% off everything. And if you use the code YTS050515, you get an extra 5% off and that ends May 15th. So it's coming up here, um, but keep an eye out uh, later uh, this month uh, for you know other deals and things. And she always has special um, uh, monthly specials so click on that tab a lot of times it's just a great price and then free shipping on top of that so uh, check those out but this happens to be the sweet nectar stamp set so this is mine the one I had in my um arsenal here and I suppose I'd never use it because it doesn't look like I ever tried but sometimes you know when you wipe it clean they wipe really clean when you use water-based markers so it's possible I did and I just uh don't know that yet <laughs> so we have the uh stamps here as you can see there's like a cute little shadow stamp the stamp that we're going to color with markers there's a detail stamp which is this hibiscus and then there's the um shadow stamp that we're going to color with markers again um with the hibiscus and it's more of a, a larger stamp and then I have the dies that go along with it so you have the hummingbird the larger hummingbird and the flower and that's what it says here die die so there's dies for those and this is the one she sent along now this one I noticed doesn't have a carrier sheet like this one so either I'll pop this carrier sheet in there or I'll just make a copy of it so that you know you have that too just for uh, reference um but I will be giving this away. So um, normally with my giveaways, it's very simple. All you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel, say enter me, one entry per person, um, like the uh, video, and yeah, I mean, just have fun watching it. And um, at the end of the video, there will be the rules kind of written out for you guys. But today is May 12th. So I will end this on the 17th and I'll draw one name on the 18th to win that prize, okay? So you'll win yourself the uh, set that I'm gonna review right now. So I'm gonna grab some papers, uh, my markers and different things so we can get started. Okay, so first we'll work on the stamping just cause I'm not sure what color base I want my card yet because we haven't done the stamping yet. So I'm gonna bring this out. Sorry, I'm gonna I need use to dig out this thing and it was making a lot of noise. So I, I'm gonna use um, Nina Classic Solar well, this is classic Crest card, but it's the Ultra Smooth, smooth Solar White, because I told you guys I'd be trying different bases, card stamping paper, excuse me, because um, I'm always using the Crafter's Companion one, and I don't know, I think it has a lot of tooth to it. That's the thing about that paper. I don't know about how smooth it is. So um, let me move my chair a little bit closer here. So I'm just going to bring this out, and that's what we're going to use today. I'm just going to cut a piece off, because obviously I don't need everything, but I'm just going to... That's probably still too much and I'm probably wasting it because I know it's not cheap paper, so, uh, you know, be a little more frugal with it there. Um, real quickly, I'm going to run over, even though this is little and I normally don't do this, but since that one time that I did have my ink repel, I just want to make sure so that we are always just starting off on a good foot here. So a lot of times when you have a space, and I don't know if you can see how shiny that is, that little shininess sometimes can repel. So let's just take an eraser. I'm going to get another one after this. <laughs> running out of eraser here and just really go over the stamp the whole surface of it just to prep it again you don't always have to do this if you want to try first and then do it or not do it but to me might as well just get going and just start off on the good foot okay so we're going to do both of these guys I'll start off with the flower and I would probably want it like there And again, if you have air bubbles, just go ahead and kind of let that out. If, especially if you have a larger stamp, you might get some air bubbles in there. Small air bubbles is a big deal, but if you have a big gap, and I've learned my lesson because it's true. You, it makes it so that it doesn't stamp into there um, very well or at all. I'll just keep this paper to the side for now while I'm inking up. And hibiscus, what color do we want? I have some really pretty ones outside that are yellow and pink, and I'm like, that's so gorgeous. But um, it, it's in a pot, and it's hard for me to keep it watered, so um, it's kind of a bummer. Um, and it always looks peachy. The buds look peachy before it comes out. Sure, let's do that and see what happens. <laughs> so um, the ones I have are pretty much all yellow, so I'm going to do... Try to keep it laid down so that you really cover your whole surface. I don't know if that's that's a leaf. 
right? And then this bright pink, I'm just going to kind of go around the edges a little bit. And that little center tip. Sometimes I think the center tip on mine are red, but that's okay. I'm just going to... So I'm going to do that with all of them. The little buds can be kind of pink, I guess, because like I said, they're usually just like that peachy color. And then here's another one that's almost open. And they're so pretty. Have you ever seen hibiscus? They do. They untwist, basically. Or that's what it looks like. Let's just do both of these since we're here. And I'm just adding a little bit of the pink here and there. They're kind of curled up like this when you see them. And, um, and then they kind of un... Just to kind of open up. So I'm going to go in with a light green. Wherever I see what might look like greenery. And then maybe a little bit darker green. I'm just adding a little hints of color. And then just brown for the stems here. And then Lisa always brings in a little black, and I haven't done that in a while, but let me just, not in a while, but I didn't use black in this uh, image. But just dotting some. Make sure that's tucked in there. I'm gonna give a little breath, even though you don't have to do that, but I always like to. And let's go ahead and stamp. And I like this to really just marry up, so I like to just give it a really good squishing. <laughs> and then we'll look at it, and if it's not as vibrant as you like, like I missed that little middle section. Actually, I did that on myself, so let me try and push more on that section. Yeah, that's better. Actually, really nice. This impression looks better than when I did the, um, yeah, look at that. I think it's pretty bright. I'm going to go over and do the middle flower again. Again, go in with the lightest color. That's what Lisa's tip is, just, just go in with the lightest colors. But um, also, if you want to wipe this down before you go to do that, that's a little hint I have, a little tip, because... What can happen is, um, oh, that came out so pretty because the pink kind of turned into orange. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little more of this one. <laughs> it's too pretty. For this one, it's a lot simpler because I know the colors and I remember easily. But if you have a lot going on, but um, my little tip is to go ahead and wipe it down before you do the second coat, just in case you spread black around, especially if you did a lot of black in your imagery. I think with the, like the little koi or other little fish, a lot of times there's, um, I think that's good. A lot of times there's a, a lot of black in it. So if you smear it, when you go back in with your marker, you can smear it. So just wipe it off because it's water-based. It just wipes really easily. So I'll do a little second coat. Make sure I'm pressing down everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. So pretty. Look at that. Okay, I think I'm liking this <laughs> Nina Solar White. It's not as thick. Obviously it's a little bit thinner. I think this is 200 GSM, 216 GSM, where the, um, Crafting Penny was like 300, so I just squirt with a little water, but just wiping it works too. And this is what I was telling you, I wasn't sure if I'd used this stamp set before, because once you wipe it, look at this. I mean, it's perfectly clean, ready to go. But, you know, just wanted to make sure. Okay, so now we need also our little, um, little guy here. That is so pretty. Okay, I kind of want to stamp this one. Oh, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll stamp them over here. I was like, I want to conserve my paper, but at the same time, but these are going to get cut out separately. They don't have to be together when I cut them out. So let's just put that paper, that stamp right there. <clears throat> and this little cutie pie, what color do we want? I like teals. I like purples. Oh my gosh, in the morning, I'm telling you, I have to like really 
clear my throat. So let me do these two and maybe some deep purple. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna color basically his whole little body. And then we'll do some accent colors. And what's nice with this one is that you can see what you're doing. I mean, sometimes when you have a light color, you just have to trust it's there. But you can also see it. If you kind of look to the side, you'll see the shimmer of the color. But there we go. So I start with the light blue. I'm gonna put in some of the darker blue here and there. I don't know. In there. Some purple. You know what? I'm gonna use some green. I'm gonna use this bright green. Just in here. Why not? And then we're gonna take our black, and this is what I was talking about. Like you kind of put black around the little eyes. His beak, is this brown? No, oh, it's black. Okay little beak and then just do some dotting here and there just helps break up the color and looks awesome I'm putting my paper butted up all the way against there and then press it down I think I put on my Instagram before my pictures of my hibiscus that's in the front oh my gosh you guys he's great just in that one I like this paper. <laughs> I can feel like a little roughness. So I don't know if it's, well, in this area too. So maybe it's because the way I pressed it so hard um, on the color. But other than that, I mean, look how it sucked up the color. So nice. And I've been buying tons of that Crafters Companion stamping paper. Maybe I'll just keep that for my Spectrum Noir coloring because it is thicker and it holds onto the color nicely. But for right now, I think this is it. <laughs> so what I was going to do with this one, perfect. I don't even have, I didn't probably have to do the second stamping to be honest on that first the, the flowers either but I'm gonna trim this out so I can cut them separately try to conserve my paper now that I know I like this better so there it is guys there's your answer because I know a lot of people <laughs> want me to compare or ask about what I think of uh, my Nina and I'm like you know what I have never really paid attention to it but now that I'm working with different mediums and doing more and, you know, we're growing as a, as a channel, guys. We're learning. <laughs> we're trying things out. Um, I really like that. So I am going to do Lisa's little trick of putting a piece of tape on this packaging tape. And now I don't even use this packaging tape. It stays here with me like it's a craft item. Um, and I'm just going to pull that a little bit. I'm going to put it on my little pretty girl here. And we're going to trim her out in just a second, okay? So let me clean up some of this stuff because we don't need all this stuff yet right anymore. And uh, we'll continue. Okay, so I answered my own question. Remember I said, is that black? And then, um, no, it was the darkest brown is what I had in my hand. <laughs> so if you look at it, actually it looks really nice, so it's not a big deal. But usually I use the black to do the little accent dots and the beak and everything. But I had used this one, this dark, dark. So that's why I was like, no, it didn't look right. Um, it looked lighter than black, you know? Okay, so I'm going to take that. Where are my dies? And we're going to do a little bit of partial die cutting, I hope. Well, at least that's my plan um, with my card base. I thought just to do something a little different, but we will see what happens. <clears throat> so this little guy, remember <laughs> with the frog, when I put this on here, it starts sliding around just because it's slippery, right? So let's just be careful. Um, the other day somebody had made a comment, she said my work surface looks smaller than usual. And I was like, really? Because I cleared out, I showed you guys in a video recently that I cleared this whole table off and I have like all this workspace, so <laughs> I don't know. But of course that's my zoom, I probably zoomed in and she wasn't used to that, I don't know. Okay. You know what, with this one I am going to make um, an aperture and that way it kind of answers that question for you guys. Real quick, let me grab a scrap piece of paper. This is much bigger than a scrap, but I will just cut it down. So this is what I mean by making yourself an aperture, and it doesn't have to be that big, so I'll just do that. A lot of times it's better to have it a little bit smaller so that you can still see what you're going to do. So I'm just going to stick this on here, and... Mm, I'm trying to think where is a good place to put a flap. It's because her beak is so skinny, I want to make sure that I'm not... Um, cutting it wrong. I 
you guys see that? You just pull it and let the thing roll. <laughs> All right. So we have this, we could have cut this out in black and you have a cute little black um, kind of shadow of a hummingbird because it's a perfect shape. But let's open this up. Again, I told you Lisa has a tip of going around this too with a pen or a pen, with a pen or a pencil. And that way, when you put your flap back down, I'll show you right now, that you'll know that you have it exactly where you want it. So basically you make a little aperture and you line it up on your little bird or whatever it is that you're trying to do so that you know is it gonna cut exactly there. You see that, how I lined it up, it's perfect. I'm gonna flip this back down. But sometimes when you go to flip this back down, it could move. It might not be in the same spot. What I do is I jiggle it so I know it's like click into the spot I want it. But <clears throat> just to be safe, you if you have the lines around it, then you can also tell by the lines that are around it that you have it set down perfectly. And then I've seen um, Lisa, what she does is she, um, now she, uh, she laminates this or at least puts packaging tape on it before she um, does the aperture. So that way you have a piece that's like reusable and it's nice and thick. So just like we put packaging tape on the little um, bird, you can do that, excuse me, and then you have a really reusable template. I tell you guys in the morning, got the allergies going, <laughs> still waking up. Actually, I woke up this morning and Dorian was awake and I'm like, you need to go back to sleep. It was like 5.45 because they'll come down and they'll want to chit chat with mama. And I'm like, I got to make my videos, children. Look at this. Look at this. I love this trick. It's so cute. So cute. Now, if you have another machine and you want to run it through again for the embossing, just obviously leave it in there and run it through for embossing and it'll kind of push up into this area, right? These areas. But that's up to you. Right now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So let's put that to the side. And then we just need to cut out this guy. Again, if you wanna make an aperture, she makes her dies so that they're really close to the edge. Um, this one was designed a little while ago, so it's a little bit different, but you can still see through it really well. So as you're looking through it, just kind of try and make sure, like the leaves are kind of lined up, like these little buds are kind of lined up, and you'll have a pretty good idea that you're in the right spot. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit like that. I think that's good. But again, you can make yourself another aperture and make sure you hit it exactly where you want. And again, you can also emboss this, but I'm using my marquee. It's not going to be embossed, okay? But if you have another machine, just run it back through with your rubber embossing mat. Sometimes when they're big, I have to get, get it going. There we go. I use my thumb to kind of push it through. And here we go. Guys, another tip real quick with their marquee, I just want to mention, always put it with the folder edge first, unless you're embossing. If you're embossing, you can run it the other way too. But for this, because somebody had told me that it took hers in and then that one side came through. I'm like, that's like, how? Impo that's impossible. But I guess it's possible if you go this way because it might pull this one and not keep this top one and then it pulls out. I don't know. But make sure the folder goes through when you're cutting, okay, first. And again, make sure everything is cut. Um, Again, run it through with your rubber embossing mat if you like to emboss. And then you have all this little detail kind of pushed up in there. But for now, I'm just going to remove it. And let me get a card base and I'll decide what color I want to do the card base so that we can get this going. And remove this very carefully. Super delicate. So what I like to do is kind of push from the front and the back. <laughs> Can you imagine if you embossed this, it would stay real nicely. Um, another quick tip that I haven't done yet and I should probably try it for the next video is to run a dryer sheet over your die before you go to cut. Just rub it on the back and um, it'll pop right out. That's pretty good, even for just eyeballing it. Okay, I will be right okay. back. So I have this pretty card base. It's a nice kind of coral color. Um, I'm gonna fold it right now. You don't have to, because I'm just gonna eyeball this. But um, <clears throat> my plan was to kind of do a little bit of partial die cutting, which, you know, is kind of fun. And so I'm kind of eyeballing where I want to put my flower. And then I'm gonna have this little guy out here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is take my die and put it like here, that's fine. And we will see what happens, <laughs> all right? So I'm just gonna tape this down. And I think I only want, I'm trying to decide how much of it I want cut away. 
probably just up to like here, just this very first little part. So I'm gonna take this, obviously I have to put it in a bigger machine because I have to um, set this up the way I want it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put it so that it's cutting um, just up to here and whatever is hanging off is not gonna be cut, okay? So I'm gonna kind of put it here and I'm just totally eyeballing this because this part isn't that technical. What I'm gonna do is tape it to my surface, to my cutting plate. Just because, so let me see where I'm, where am I going here? I want a little bit sideways. If I can do a little bit more and turn it as sideways as I can so that the machine doesn't mess it up. Something like that. <clears throat> I'm not turning it too sideways because what happens is I don't want it to get messed up, obviously. <laughs> um, so, Let's do metal sheet, plastic shim. And we're gonna run it through here. Wherever all the plates are, it's where it's gonna cut. I'm gonna reverse it real quick. Come on back, buddy. This thing never lets me reverse for some reason. <laughs> I've tried it so many times, maybe my reverse option doesn't work for me. All right, well, let's just keep going then. Oh, now it's not doing anything. Good job, <laughs> Gemini. It is stuck. Let me mess with this to get my paper okay, out. you guys, I do not know what happened to that. It is stuck and I actually even ripped the, um, the mat trying to pull this out, you know what I'm saying? So like something needs to come out. It won't go forward, it won't go back. It's just stuck. And which is weird because it already taken most of it in. Like really, it's this much is sticking out the back. So like probably this much is still in the machine. And it should be the side that doesn't really have much because there's nothing left. So I am going to finish up the card using the dies. I'm sorry from <laughs> the uh, giveaway just so I can finish this up. But I will... Um, Continue messing with that machine when my son wakes up so he can hold it and I'll try to pull it as well as I can. But sorry guys, and thank you whoever wins this. <laughs> I'm just gonna use this real quick, just real quick. And I'm just gonna start over. So I'm gonna run it through my machine again, through my M press, and again, same thing. I'm just gonna line this up where I think it should be and try and cut as much of it. And actually in the M press, this is gonna be a little bit nicer because the M press, um, I can, run through my machine this way. My Gemini might be done, you guys. I don't know. Um, I can run it through my machine this way. And so I can pivot this or angle this as much as I want, right? So if I really want it to be more angled, I'll start over here. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So leave half of it in here and pivot it as much as I want because this part will clear the opening. Does that make sense? Because it's tipped this way. So I'm going to run this through and I will, um, well, actually, let's just all stay together so we can do this together. <laughs> so you can see wherever the full sandwich is, that's where it's going to cut. So I'm going to move that just a little bit more that way. And then if your sandwich is not there, well, then it's not going to cut. Let's press run. That's the only thing about the end press. You got to press run. Sorry, guys. That's a bummer. I don't know what Gemini decided. This cut just fine. <laughs> and as you see, it cuts there. And this time I did cut into my mat, so it did do embossing on this, which is, you know, not the biggest deal because you're not going to see it anyway. But let's remove that. And I was kind of eyeballing how I want to cut this part. So this will be on here. And let me just take some scissors. I'm just going to cut the excess straight. We'll see if that works out for us. This is all going to come away up to where? Up to right here. Or so. And there's a little nip right here I can probably take out too. 
Okay, let me look at this and see if I want to cut away anymore or if I'm happy with where we're at. So with this on here, I can see that I can cut this away and make it more delicate. If you look on the back, you can kind of see that, how it's kind of cut into right here. So what I'm going to do is pick up this piece. And that will just make it more delicate, have some more feature there. So I'm going to trim that off. And this piece. I didn't think I was pulling that hard. I'm looking at my hand. Look at this. I busted a little, some vessels there. That's not good. And here. I know you guys have had things that were, it got stuck like that and worked it out. So if there's any tips you guys have for me, go ahead and leave them there so I don't destroy my whole hand. But otherwise, I will be fighting with it. <laughs> and we'll see what we can do. Okay. I'm probably still going to trim this last piece to here. Right there. All right, now I was debating if I'm gonna pop this up or just, I don't know, we'll see. Okay. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and just do my fold now. I didn't do it like I did before. So again, four and a quarter. This is a standard A2 size card. So we're gonna fold that over. I still have this here. And then I'm gonna put my little guy kind of hanging off the side so he's barely gonna be hanging on by a beak, kind of. All right, let me see if I can get some paper for this back piece. Okay, guys, so let's wrap this up. So I have all my little elements here. What I'm going to do is also stamp the little um, tiny hummingbird from that set. She's just kind of like a shadow, and I have some fuchsia ink here. I just want to see where this is going to be. Obviously, I can kind of tell, but... And I'm just going to put a couple little stamps... Maybe I'll do the second gen on this one. So I stamped that one off and then back again. I stamped it off on the side so it's a little bit lighter than the other ones, as you can see. And this is just a piece of paper from this stack I have here called Measure, Mix, and Stir from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to use this white glue, I guess. It's right in front of me here. So thanks for watching, guys. I um, hope you like the giveaway. This is a really nice, comprehensive little set. Really cute how everything goes together. Again, you also have the uh, detail stamp for um, for the uh, hibiscus there. And I'm just going to layer this paper in here. And then we're just going to glue this pretty girl down. I would normally use my tacky glue for this because I'm kind of... I like the detail of it, my little detail bottle, but that's okay. We're just going to get this down. And if you want to, you know, put some dimensional on this, you could do that too. You have to be very careful. That's why I brought my syringe, but I decided not to. But you could do that. And I was wondering when I lay this down, should I kind of offset it? But that's okay. Because if you offset it a little bit like a drop shadow, you could do that. Lots of things you can do. And now with the glueiest glue, I'm gonna stick down my little pretty shiny little girl. And basically just on her little beak. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put that down and of course let it dry really, really well. And we're gonna put her like up in here. All right. So thank you so much, Local King Rubber Stamp, for saying the item for a uh, giveaway there. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video, even with my little hiccup. If you know how to get a Gemini unstuck, please let me know. Otherwise, I guess that machine is done. So here's the card. I hope you guys like it. And I will see you all at the next one. The rules will be coming up next. And good luck, everyone. Bye now. I'll have the links for everything in the description box. I hope you're well. See you at the next one. Okay, guys. I just wanted to follow up with you. I got it. So... <laughs> It's not, well, it is the machine. So this is what happened. Now this thing is completely destroyed. But, um, so what I figured as I was kind of messing with it is that, you know what? It doesn't know what's going on. Because when I looked into the machine, the plates had cleared, but that little bit of the die was still left, but it still has tightness to hold onto the plates, right? That's the problem. So what happens with the Gemini is if the sensor is not activated, it's not going to do anything. That's how it knows when to stop cutting. That's how it knows all that kind of stuff. 
So I guess what happened is there was enough of it that it just stopped. I don't know why. Um, that's never happened to me before. So what I figured out was I got some of these plates and I tried to activate the sensor again. And that's pretty much what I did. And that's what got this out. <laughs> so um, I kind of followed it and then it came back at me. So it came back in reverse like I was pressing it to do. So I just want to follow up with you guys. So next time, if you have a Gemini, because obviously you saw the Emp Empress did it, no problem. Put the die end first, like if you have a little piece of die hanging off, if you're gonna do partial die cutting, put that die end first so that when it goes in, it'll take the plate, it'll run through, and it won't have any issues stopping. It'll just know it's done and actually be done, right? So with the Gemini, you have to do a little trick. Um, I'm glad I found that out for you guys because, um, I, you know, I must have done it that way the last time I did partial die cutting because I've never had a problem with it before. But run the die part first, the extra die, and then let the thing suck in, okay? So thanks for watching, guys. I just wanted to come back and let you know, so I really appreciate uh, your time, and um, thanks again. All right, good luck.